done so much for all of us over the last year. So first and foremost, uh, we want to say thank you. Thank you to our doctors and our nurses and our medical workers and all the people who have done so much for us over the last uh, gosh, 14, 14, 15 months. We all remember how, how scary and how desperate uh, the days were one year ago, uh, right about now. Um, Steve and I, I can remember we had our first um, get together on this on, I want to say it was March 6th. I think it was before we had the first reported case in Orange County. And I remember a lot of people being like, you're, you're going to scare people, you're overdoing it. And we were wondering whether we were overdoing it, but we got together with uh, the county health officials and with the folks in Dutchess County, and we all got together at the Emergency Services Center. And we started to say, you know, we all got to work together. We got to take this seriously. But honestly, we had no idea. And and whatever we were doing was was nothing compared to what these folks were doing, uh, because it was showing up. Um, and these were our neighbors and friends and loved ones. And it was frightening when there wasn't enough uh, personal protective equipment, or when we didn't have tests, or we didn't know how it was being transmitted. And so I guess I just want to start by recognizing the extraordinary distance we've traveled, and and in doing that, say that it's why it, it is so exciting where we find ourselves if we keep working at it. And that's the key point today, is that right now in Orange County, the New York Times tells me, you may have more specific data, Steve, that the, the positivity rate is down 50% in the last two weeks, on a two week average. 50%, maybe more. Love it. Dramatic improvement, that's great news. And this is, this, is, this is so important to these guys because it means you can handle the folks who are still sick and who are still in trouble and, and we can do it in a way that's humane and, and sensible. But, but the fact is, is that we know this is a function of, yes, the weather and the time of year probably, but especially the vaccine. And, and this is true in Dutchess County and it's true in Putnam County and it's true in Westchester County. And right now in the county I live, there are 10 cases out for the 100,000 residents. And we haven't seen numbers that good since since the summer when we got a break last year. And we have now successfully put a couple hundred million shots in people's arms in a very short period of time. And thank God for the American Rescue Plan and thank God for a, a federal strategy on vaccinations and all the progress we've made working as partners across party lines and layers of government and getting things done and putting the resources behind this effort. But it doesn't matter if people don't get vaccinated. And, and I know people got questions and they're fair. And I know people want to know that it's safe and they have a right to know that it's safe. And, and we need to take those questions and, those, and that hesitancy, we call it, seriously. But my message to my neighbors is this is a safe and effective vaccine. I've taken it, my family has taken it, my staff has taken it, these guys have been vaccinated. And we've done that because we believe in the science and we've had our questions answered. And we think if you ask good questions, you'll get good answers. And the right decision to make is to get yourself and your family vaccinated. And the good news is, is that it's free and that it's plentiful and that it is now available to everyone in a bunch of places. And so if you still think it's hard to get vaccinated because in the early days there was a supply issue, please understand that really there is, there is no no reason why um, someone can't walk out their door today and find a place to get a safe, free, effective vaccine that will save your life, that will save your family's life, that will help our communities get back to normal, get our businesses open and our restaurants open and our kids going to school the way we want and playing in sports the way we want and all the things that we counted on and took for granted before this terrible pandemic. And so I'm, I'm, I'm here to, with, my, my, with my friends in government to thank these, thank these workers, but to also say that we have put the resources behind it, $75 million for Orange County, $20 million for this city. Uh, we're trying to get millions of dollars for this hospital right now. The money is going to be there. The vaccines are going to be there. And you've got different choices and they have different kind of individual characteristics, but any vaccine right now is better than, than no vaccine. And, and I just hope that people understand that, that there is someone in your life who you trust, uh, a neighbor, your pastor, your rabbi, your coach, the person you work with who, who did this. And I hope you just turn to them and say, what's your experience been? Because overwhelmingly, I think they're going to tell you what I would tell you, which is that it was easy. And, and my arm was a little sore for about 24 hours. But I feel so much better when I get on an airplane and go to Washington 
and I'm wearing a mask, you bet, because because we all still got to do our part and set a good example. But I just know that I'm not going to hurt somebody. And that makes me feel good because I'm not going to pass the virus to that neighbor I have who has asthma and is vulnerable. And, and I've been worried to death about for a year. And I don't have to worry about my kids. And I don't have to worry about my uh, my 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 friends and, and, and others who have health issues that would really make this a scary thing. And we can focus for once on, on treating the people who've got this virus, the long-term symptoms, all the things we still don't know about it, instead of chasing a pandemic that's out of control. So really all I'm here to do is say thank you very much and encourage everyone in Orange County and in the lower Hudson Valley. And Steve can talk about all the things you're doing, but I want to congratulate the county executive on, on all he's done to, to fight the pandemic and, and especially the, the most recent numbers, which are the best evidence yet that we can win this race. Um, last point, there are variants out there you've heard of that may be more infectious, that may be more lethal. The human population is the variant factory. So when you see the nation of India going through the horrific things it's going through, and I have a meeting with the intelligence committee on India in a couple of hours, or when we look in South America and we see what's happening in Brazil, where countries have not been able to mount the response we have here, that do not have the vaccine production capacity that our extraordinary American industry provides. Those cases, hundreds of thousands on a daily basis, are where these variants are going to erupt because the human bodies who are, who are carrying these viruses will manufacture different versions of it. And the scientists can tell you how it works, but the bottom line is, is that if, if something becomes more advantageous, if the virus becomes more capable of spreading, more contagious, more lethal, that variant will become the dominant one. And so we've got to be vaccinated before that happens so that we, while we today have a safe and effective uh, vaccine against the types of virus that we see right now, we can, we can, we can win this race. And then, and then we can prevent the, the future spread um, with, with booster shots and other effective strategies as we, as we change our game too. So time matters is the point. So now is the time to put the virus to bed and win this war and, and win this race uh, once and for all. But we need everybody to do it. And, and we cannot do it uh, without everyone doing their part. So that's my message and I hope people will take it to heart. And, and together we're thanking these wonderful people who've done so much for so many of us. Um, that's the only thing I want to say today. Steve, it's all yours. Thank you, Congressman. So it's great to be here today. Uh, really, in such a better place than we were a year ago. I saw my friend Joe McGurk. First time we've hugged each other in over a year. When this uh, pandemic broke out in, uh, I think it was early April, we stood out here, it was cold. There's people that were very sick in the hospital. Our numbers were going through the roof county and, and state and nationwide. And uh, we just sat out here for about a half hour, stood out here and, and went through our notes on how to combat this thing. My friend, Sean Maloney, when he brings up the March 6th meeting, uh, we all got together at the 911 center. He bought every healthcare provider in Orange County, Dutchess County, and uh, the Hudson Valley, just to say, hey guys, this is coming. We need to start talking. We better be ready to work together on this. Uh, that work and, and that meeting had, was uh, the powerful send off and start uh, started point, sorry, uh, for us to fight this pandemic. And working intimately with St. Luke's and these wonderful nurses and RNs and everybody behind me was phenomenal. Dan, uh, Joan, Kate, working together, doing these joint pods in uh, Orange County, SUNY Orange and Newburgh here together was just awesome and cool. I even had a, uh, a St. Luke's uh, shirt, couldn't find it, it was in the laundry today, sorry Dan. Uh, but I got one of those at that, that say Montefiore, sorry, I gotta get the branding correct. Um, but it was <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, th what these individuals behind me did uh, was really God's work. Uh, Sean and I were joking, and, and Jonathan, how now they're getting the appreciation and love that they've always deserved pre-COVID. I've seen them do really incredible things. So uh, thanking the RNs and, and for what they've done and, and the hospital staff and their, and their frontline workers is phenomenal. The one thing I would say, the numbers are plummeting. I had, uh, last week I was averaging about 150 to 200 new positive cases a day. Two days ago I had 40 positive cases. Yesterday, the last 24 hours, 50 positive cases. So we're heading in a very good downward trajectory right now. Uh, we also have a ton of people that have been released from the hospital, thankfully. We are still having people that are sick. We have about 13 people on ventilators now, which are most serious cases. But we are in a much better place than we were in January, than we were in December. Uh, so 
We need to keep it that way. The last thing I want to say is we are doing, and I just want to, this is one of the things we're here to talk about today, is the vaccine, vaccine hesitancy. Like, like the congressman said, we've all been vaccinated. Here's the situation. We were banging out two to 3,000 shots a day at our clinic in Goshen. We vaccinated over 60,000 people just in county government. No other county in the Hudson Valley county government has done that. State government announced they did 50,000 at SUNY Orange and Middletown. Huge impacts, what the hospitals have done and our other healthcare partners have done. What I'm doing now a day, one to 200. Can't get anybody to sign up. That is the reality. So two, three weeks ago, we're banging out two to 3,000 first doses of Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. Today, a few weeks later, we're doing luckily, if we're lucky, 200. And it's getting less and less to the point where Orange County uh, government is requesting no more doses because I'm sitting on a couple thousand right now. Uh, so that's the reality of it. In the next few weeks, I'm gonna be doing some pop-ups with local government. I did a call with the supervisors and mayors Monday. So we're gonna do one in Walden. We're gonna do one in Highland Falls next week. We're doing a couple of the malls. We like doing that because when people are shopping, we say, look, give us 20 minutes, five minutes for paperwork, 15 minutes to sit and wait, and we'll give you your vaccine. It's that simple. Uh, so that's really where our next phase is. We're also hoping that the healthcare providers are gonna to continue to do it, but uh, we are going to start getting or reducing our role in this business because the demand is not there and I can't have my machine, which is made up of paid staff and volunteers sitting there and waiting for people that aren't coming. So it really, the message has gotta be clear. Come and get your shots now uh, because it's easy and simple. My part of being the, the vaccination part of county government is going to start going away. So I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you to all these awesome people behind me and uh, continue to work together on it. Thank you. And uh, there are numbers behind this. We've seen about an 18% drop, um, you know, week by week, in a, despite the surging supply of vaccine. So, so that is the one storm cloud over this otherwise, uh, you know, sunny, sunny news. Is that if we if we if we stop trying, the virus is going to win. Um, I want to give Jonathan Jacobs an opportunity to, to, to say a few words and, and also um, and, and, uh, bring, up, uh, bring up John. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman, and good to see you and County Executive Steve Newhouse and, of course, John, who is here, and the dedicated workers. And I just want to, first of all, I want to thank the Congressman for what the federal government has done, getting the resources getting the money to the state, to the counties, localities, so important. And um, just want to reemphasize the need for everybody to get a shot. The other day I'm talking to someone, he needed a referral about a matter. And then he said, I said, well, did you get your shot? And he said, he didn't. And he gets into all these conspiracy theories. I said, I don't care what conspiracy theory you believe in, get your shot. It's just ridiculous. Uh, I just, I'd be remiss not to mention this is Nurses Week and they've done such a great job, all the healthcare professionals, and, but it's more, you know, we just, it's more than just saying how great you are. We have to show our appreciation every day. In Albany, we just passed safe staffing for hospitals and nursing homes, so important. And I just hope that we continue to honor our nurses, not just so much by saying you're great and banging pans and making noise, but to make sure they get paid properly and have the equipment and the, and the money and everything they deserve. And I know that the Congressman is doing that to make sure that the hospital gets money. And I know that he's going to come through on that. So I just want to thank you for letting me be a part of this and uh, for the great hospital we have here. I got my shot at the armory. I got my shots there. It was so efficient, it was nothing. They did it. And I said, so when are you gonna do it? They said, we just did it, okay. And it just moved along so fast. And then the second shot was very easy. And it was just a great, you, you were so efficient, what you did and how you did it. So again, thank you for letting me be here and, and just so happy to applaud the great work that you've been doing. Thank you. And um, you know, the, um, the, the, the stories are real. So my, my other half has been volunteering for months now in a, in a vaccination clinic. And he said the other day they had 46 people come in. They had 500 doses available in the morning. So 500 shots, 46 people showed up. Folks, that's not going to do it. But in the afternoon, 
they did a thousand second shots. So, so we clearly have a group of folks who are very enthusiastic to get the first and second shot. And now there are a bunch of people who are just hesitant. And we believe that some folks will, will be real hard to reach, but a lot of people have just been hanging back. So if you're one of those people who's been hanging back, now is the time. Get the first shot. If you've got the first shot, get the second shot, or unless you get Johnson & Johnson, you're one and done. But but we are definitely seeing a drop off and it's alarming. Joan, do you want to say a few words? Thank you for hosting us. So good morning, everyone. And uh, I want to thank the Congressman. Uh, Sean Patrick Maloney has been with us time and time again over really decades now, forever. <laughs> Um, he's also brought a lot of money into um, our community and into our hospital. And we were able to do what we can do because we did get the CARES Act money and additional funding. He's also put in um, something for our hospital to expand our cancer services. It does have to go through appropriations, but once again, he keeps his local hospital front and center. Um, County Executive Steve Newhouse, like he stated, he and I go back many, many years. Steve was here at least, at least three, four, sometimes five times a month. Um, called me several times a week, up to 10, 11 o'clock at night. He was out late, so was I. I was at the hospital and he was at, at the exec county executive's building. And I'll tell you, he didn't forget us. He brought us supplies, he brought us food, and, um, and actually today is the first time we've hugged, probably in over a year. And then uh, Assemblyman Jacobson, um, he and the Senator, Senator Skoufis is someplace else today, also very, very instrumental in for us to be able to fight this war. And it was a war, there's no doubt about it. Um, I will say that when I look at the vac vaccination hesitation, we have to keep something first and foremost. Number one, today I stand before you. Um, yes, I'm the CEO of this fine community hospital. I'm also a registered nurse and um, considered by the Gallup poll for the last 17 years, the most trusted profession. I would never say aloud to get this vaccination unless I 100% believed in the science. I believe in it. And I'll tell you, I witness it. There were a lot of people dying in this hospital 14 months ago, a lot of people. And it was, um, we were at our best and we were at our worst at times. And I will tell you today, Every patient that walks in this hospital, every community member that walks in this hospital and has had the vaccination, the second vaccination, most of them are going home. If they're admitted, guess what? No complications or minor, minor complications and not one death. I can't tell you that 14 months ago, there was no vaccination. So the vaccination hesitancy as an RN, as a registered nurse, I understand, I understand, but please, don't look at the fiction. Let's look at the facts. Let's look at the science. I believe in the science. The science is working because today, instead of having 90% of our hospital filled with COVID patients, we have less than 1% today. So, I mean, it is working. It is working and I have no deaths. So thank you, Congressman, for um, orchestrating it. It is our pleasure, our absolute pleasure to host this. Well, um, that's wonderful. Thank you, John. And that's a great point. It's a great point. It's not just about preventing, uh, you know, the virus. It's about minimizing the, the impacts of it. Uh, questions from Chris. Hey, please go ahead. Hello. And Hi. Joan, thank you for your remarks. Uh, that kind of lends to my question. I know that Assemblyman Jacobson okay. talked about uh, conspiracy theories, but there are serious concerns among members of the public um, about, uh, you know, distrust in government. There is a distrust in the pharmaceutical company, which we saw during the opiate crisis. You know, so how do you address those concerns when we're talking about vaccine hesitancy and, you know, listen to what we're saying, we're all getting vaccinated, the numbers are down. There's a lot of people that are gripped in fear with distrust in government and distrust in the pharmaceutical companies. Right, no, and I, and I understand that, believe me, um, I, I, you know, you're talking to somebody who was on the floor of the House of Representatives when people who distrusted the outcome of the election broke down the windows and doors. I, I know we have a lot of division in our country right now. I know that people feel very strongly and they get different news sources and there's a lot of misinformation out there. So my message is I understand if people have questions and, and that's cool, you should have questions and ask the questions. And I think Joan's point is that is that the best answers you're gonna get from the best sources and others don't trust government, trust your neighbor, trust your pastor, trust your doctor. And, and 
and we believe that the best answers are going to steer you toward getting the shot because if you're scared of the shot okay but you should be scared of the virus more and as a, as a community we know what the virus has done and we have lost family members and neighbors and we can never repair all that damage and we don't want to do this anymore and we have a way through and what i can tell you is i've put the shot in my own body you know i have three children i i've told them to get vaccinated and 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 watched it happen and so the people i love most in this world i'm giving the same advice to and i'm taking it myself and i don't know how else to to encourage people except to say as i did everyone has someone they trust and I think that if you ask the people who are most knowledgeable and most thoughtful and, and, and best educated uh, on these subjects in, in your own network, in your own world, that you rely on, that you will get the right answers. And I think that if you're getting a different answer, I think that there's going to be something wrong with that source. And that will show itself over time, too. And, and we just can't win this unless we get together on this. So, so I know we're divided about a lot of things, but we got to come together on this. We've got to come together on this. We've got to come together on science. And we've got to come together on what is working right now to give us our lives back because there's a wonderful world right on the other side of this. And we can get there, but we have to do it together. And maybe it's maybe it's just as well that in a country as divided as ours, we're going to have to pull together to get where we need to go. Um, and I don't know how else to say it. Joe, go ahead. Maybe Steve or John. You know, uh, one thing, we're, we're doing a slogan with uh, the county exec to fear the virus, not the vaccine. And I will tell you, the numbers don't lie. So when we have a hospital, when people are presenting to the hospital and the numbers are dropping, and if you've had two vaccines, no deaths, I am not happy to say in this nation, in our own community hospital, we were looking at a mortality rate of 30% prior to the vaccine. I'm talking zero right now. So, and as a nurse, I do understand. I really do understand the concerns and the fears. But talk to you. I have my chief medical officer here, Dr. Gino Del Savio. We have such great medical professionals, our physicians, our nursing staff. I mean, talk to the people that really know, and we have to trust the science. Nothing else. Just say one quick thing. We have an unusually large amount of media presence here right now. What I could say to you, Blaze, which I think is the, uh, is the way to go is don't take it from Jonathan, don't take it from Joan, don't take it from me, don't take it from Sean. Ask these people behind me. The first vaccines that came to Orange County came to a hospital on the other end of the county, and I went there for the political part of it and the uh, media sensation, and there was a line of nurses on the side of the wall. And I said, well, what are you guys doing here? Like, what I've been through the last eight, 10 months, I am getting the shot. Those are the people they ask. Because like Joan said, the, the Gallup poll, the most trusted people in the community are the people standing behind us. Take it from them, not just, and, and Sean had a great point, your friends that are gotten through, that got their second shot, didn't grow a third arm, they're doing fine, they now can travel. These are all the things that are gonna add up, um, but I would take it from the sources of people that were on the front lines. We did a story a few days ago about the county's uh, vaccination rate at nursing homes among right. staff members. Right. So I'm interested in knowing what's the rate among hospital workers here in Orange County. But also I wanted to mention when I spoke with nursing home administrators then, they said one of the top reasons why their staff wasn't getting the vaccine is because they were already exposed to COVID, they had COVID and felt they had natural immunity. So perhaps there's a large number of people here in Orange County that already had it and feel like, hey, I'm, I'm naturally immune. Why expose myself to the vaccine? What do you say to those folks? Right, again, you know, I, I, I really want to stress, I, I take people's concerns and objections and reasons seriously. I think for those folks, I think that, I'll, I'll let Joan tell you, but the, you know, the, the vaccine's not forever and the antibodies aren't forever, We, as far as we know. And so that's right. You may have a natural immunity if you, if you if you if your body resolved the virus you had it, you got better. But it's not lasting forever. And we know we're 14 months in here or so. And so for those who had the virus early on, those antibodies may no longer be protecting them. And there may be variants and changes to the virus that 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 can overcome those antibodies or still make you sick. So if it is a protection, it's temporary. And what we know is that even those of us who are vaccinated may need a booster as this thing moves to really get to really get through it. So, so I understand those concerns again, but they're only temporary and it's, and it's no reason not to get a vaccine now. 
because if you believe in your protection, you can you can extend your protection through the vaccine. And I will tell you, it's not just a problem with nursing home workers. And I'd, I'd be curious about the, the, the rate on, on health care workers. I'll let Joan answer. I can tell you, members of Congress have had the vaccine available to us since December. Um, I got my second shot the morning after the insurrection on January 7th. Um, as I speak to you, 25% of my colleagues have not gotten the, the vaccine. And that's enormously frustrating to me. And, and it's in the way of a lot of things we need to be doing for the American people. So it's not just one group, it's everybody. It's, it's our leaders, it's our neighbors. There are a bunch of people out there who have questions and concerns. And I just, so that's why I'm saying, ask your questions, bring, you, bring us your concerns. We think we have the right answer. And, and we want you to feel good about it or trust somebody else, not us, who, who's done it. Ask them, how was it? You okay? What was your experience? Um, we're not afraid of that information. We think it helps. Us. So um, initially the CDC did come out and say that there was some natural immunity from the, if you had a virus. They're not certain about that. As a matter of fact, they don't think that's true any longer. So it's not that anyone's changing the facts, but the longer we are exposed to this virus, the more we, we, there's more science developed. So it's not going to prevent you from getting COVID. The vaccine is necessary. Um, to the Congressman's point, our hospital, we, we wish we had 100% vaccinated. We have about 73% of our healthcare workers vaccinated. And they also are, they're a subset of the, ma the, the major population also. So they have their fears and concerns. And all we can do, and we do it daily, Dan Moore, who's president of the hospital, he's also ran our vaccine clinics. He has been really um, moving this um, momentum very, uh, very much forward that um, we give a message out every day to our employees and stating, please reconsider. Please consider the vaccine, talk to your medical doctor. And our medical doctors are around the hospital, our medical staff, almost all of them, and I believe all of them are vaccinated. I have to defer to Gina Del Sabio on that. But there is fear, we understand the fear concern, but we, again, we have to go with the science, we have to go with the numbers. An excellent question. So our healthcare workers in Orange County, we're upwards of 85% have been vaccinated as an average. We looked at that on Monday. Our nursing homes, which is an excellent part of your question, 52% of nursing home workers have been vaccinated, 48% have not. 85% of nursing home patients or residents have been vaccinated. Where are my, my biggest clusters in Orange County right now? Two nursing homes. So that's the problem. And uh, whether they want money, days off, I don't know if that's, if you were hesitant on taking the vaccine, but now a day off is gonna convince you. Meanwhile, what these have, guys have seen for the last 14 months, that's the frustrating part with us, but that's where the numbers stand today. I looked at them yesterday. And that actually leads to my next question. Is there any possibility to offer incentives for folks? We've heard about that in other areas. There's, so there's discussion on it now, but you know, Governor Cuomo has offered four hours mandatory uh, time off. And uh, so we're, it's in discussion right now. For, I've seen proposals pop up, but I don't see anything with legs besides what's in, in fact right now the law of four hours you get off. I just want to add that if you don't care about protecting yourself because you think you're Superman or Superwoman, at least think about protecting your neighbors and those that you live with and those you come in contact with. I mean, do your part. No, we're not asking you to enlist in the army and go to boot camp to help your neighbors and protect us from an outside force. What we're saying is get a shot. Take 20 minutes, get the shot. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great point, John. It's a great point. We're not asking you to get out of a, a, a landing craft on Omaha Beach. <laughs> we're asking you to get a safe, effective vaccine for free with some time off. And we know you have questions, but please, uh, please, please do this. if if. If, if, if it takes it a while to get comfortable, fine. But now's the time. Uh, anything else? Well, listen, thank you all very much. Thank these nurses. Um, it's a great week to, to thank a nurse and anybody who's worked in the healthcare profession who have just really saved us um, over this last horrible year. Uh, but because of that and because of the vaccine, I've got real hope uh, in what, what we can achieve together. So thank you all very much. Thanks for being here. Thank you.